Welcome to Made in Science, the official podcast of the University of Stuttgart. In today's episode, our guest is Professor Peter Pott, who is head of the Institute for Medical Device Technology, IMT, and an expert for mechatronic systems and components in medical technology context. Let's talk with him about biomedical systems as an emerging field at the University of Stuttgart how relevant the finding of meaning and purpose is for students when it comes to choosing a study program, and why New Zealand worked out for him when he went on a research stay. Hello, Professor Pott. Great to have you with us. Yeah, it's a great pleasure to be here, and thanks very much for this invitation. And uh, especially because this is going to be the re first real podcast you will ever record. So... Let's go ahead and have some fun. Well, apart from the spelling of your name and what a podcast really is, uh, you came to the university in 2017. At the moment, you are head of the Institute for Medical Device Technology. What can you tell us about the current work at the Institute? Medical devices and medical device technology is a really broad field um, in terms of engineering and uh, with a strong focus on um, the man-machine interface because every medical technology system has actually two of them. One is towards the patient because we want to treat somebody and um, be at least a little bit of help. And the other one is to uh, the personnel, the doctors, nurses, and everyone involved in Uh, medical procedures. So what we are looking at is how to treat people and how to um, make work with our devices simpler, easier, and yeah, of course, also a little bit more safe. Now, biomed is one of the two emerging fields at our university. Why do you think, uh, is this the case? What are the reasons for this particular choice of uh, biomed as one of the emerging fields i think if you if you consider biomed in a in a yeah also in a broad way you will always be in a situation that you are dealing with the well-being of people so so this whole field of of science and research has a somehow intrinsic purpose so we 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 do something good in general and then it comes down to what details groups are dealing with, um, where the focus of institutes is actually put, and and how people in general uh, see their field of, of research in biomed. Uh, we are engineers, we are actually mechanical engineers, so so we always look at some, some hardware, some devices, but we're always happy to help or to, to support others when, when it comes down to special microscopes or lab equipment or new methods in in bringing two things maybe a biological cell and an instrument together and um yeah um, um bring us all a little bit further down the way to to knowledge in general and i think biomed is as you as you said it is a um it's an emerging field because we have um yeah society becomes older We have new diseases. We have new threats, uh, also in like production of pharmaceuticals, and all these aspects are part of biomed. And so that's why it is it is an interesting field, and that's why many people just yeah have a very positive view on it. Against this background, it's perhaps not at all surprising then that biomed study program is a very attractive program for students. I think on a national level, but also internationally. Can you tell me, what is your guess? Uh, what is the formula to its success? I, I can speak for uh, medical engineering. So because um, I'm the study dean for the medical engineering bachelors and um, we have 100 new students each year uh, constantly. So no matter how the number of students declines or rises, we always have those 100. Uh, this year we had uh, 350 or so applications for that, so we can really choose who we um, who we want to have with us, and we see a lot of very motivated uh, young 
people. And interestingly, the majority is female. So um, this is also a, a good sign on on um, how attractive this this um, study program actually is. And I think what makes it attractive is what I already said before. It's um, the purpose. So so it's it's clear right from the start why you get taught this and that. So there's always this view on um, on on patients again, on on, on people, on, on well being, on on health, um, and these are all very positive um, keywords because we all get ill once in a while. We all get older. We all have our our problems with health um, somewhere, somewhat, or at least we know somebody who has has some some need for for um, support, and that's what makes it interesting because you always know what you are studying for. When the students come and uh, have decided for this, what I would describe as a meaningful, very meaningful. Uh, study program as they see it and as you also view it um, when they come to the university these days is their knowledge of level different from previous years as far as you can tell i'm, I'm always a little bit careful with with um, looking back uh, and, and and trying to estimate what i uh, experienced back then compared to today but what I see is uh, a lot of motivation, um, a lot of knowledge in in natural sciences and, and math. Um, that might be due to the fact that we can choose our students, so we choose. I guess we choose the smart ones. Um, uh, what I don't see is is a, a technical background. So so what what is probably um, decreasing over the last. Uh, three, four, five, ten years, is that um, pupils make technical experiences at home or at school. So when I look back to my teenage times, of course, I had a soldering iron and I was using it and I was building things and trying to program computers and having lots of fun with, with technical questions and asking questions to my father and other people. And I think this still happens, but not not that far. We always use technology. We have our smartphones, we have our coffee machines, we have our dishwashers and everything, and this works. And, and the car is more electronic than it ever has been before. Um, but nobody's asking how how things actually work. So how does the dishwasher work? Why why is why are the dishes clean after one and a half hours? So so what happens there? And there's these these children TV programs like Sendung mit der Maus, where things are explained. And of course, there's Instagram and YouTube where you can see lots of funny videos of technical stuff if you're interested in it. Otherwise, the algorithm wouldn't even even present it to you. Uh, and uh, I, I guess that that this technology surrounding us makes it a little bit boring, so people don't ask questions anymore. And when they then come to university and suddenly are in the situation that they are going to be those guys who are actually building technology, providing technology, um, uh, improving technology for the future, then they suddenly realize, so wow, that's that's me, that's us, that's, that's our group, that's our university who is um, in charge of providing technology to society in the future. And um, back to your question, I guess this has declined a little bit in the, uh, in the past, um, and it's up to us now to... Um, yeah, to get them back on track, to to improve this, to um, to make engineers out of of out of good people uh, who are not really uh, experienced with asking those questions and solving those problems. So we have the meaningful study program. Um, then we know questions need to be asked more uh, again than uh, than ever before. When we take that uh, together, what role does interdisciplinarity play in this picture? Uh, could that be uh, an additional factor uh, to um, get people, get students interested in the field? And when they are um, in the field, when they have made the decision to get them going in it? I think interdisciplinarity is always motivating because it allows you to, to look at something else, whatever it be, 
I mean, in medical engineering, it's clear we are engineers and we are looking at medicine. So this is our interdisciplinarity. Um, but in general, interdisciplinarity always makes things interesting a little bit more. What we do at university is um, we not only teach people, we also try to motivate them and try to open um, minds and maybe eyes to, to new situations they haven't experienced before. Um, and, and this is necessary to, to establish a stable learning process. So if you... If I just tell uh, tell some some abstract things, then this will um, be some abstract knowledge in in the brain, which is not really useful. If I try to try my best and 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 uh, connect this abstract new information to existing information, then um, uh, I'm probably better in teaching people. And um, I think this that's what we have to do at least in the first one or two years at university is to to attach new knowledge to existing knowledge and to build up uh, knowledge in general in this way. And depending on, on what, what the, the students bring with them to university, we have to, to adjust this level of, of attachment probably. And now perhaps the, the final um, aspect in this, how international uh, is your work? Do the students um, see any of that? Or is this more when it comes to PhD students, to doctoral students uh, and other colleagues in your team? So I guess for the, for the medical engineering bachelors, um, we, we, at least the teaching is not, not that much orientated uh, towards outside Germany. This is due to the fact that we, um, Uh, that we're actually quite good in Germany and especially here in the south of Germany in medical engineering. So there's lots of companies and, and institutes uh, dealing with medical technology questions. And, and I guess this is just enough for those bachelor students. However, I, I try my best uh, to send them off um, to somewhere. I, I actually don't really care where to. Um, the most important thing is, is to leave Germany for, for my, maybe a semester or two and, and study somewhere else because this just broadens the view on, on the planet as such and on and all these tiny questions we have here. Um, uh, so so I, I really um, I, I try to encourage students to, to spend some time abroad. When it comes to the masters, we do have some um, students that uh, who, who actually go somewhere else in Europe or even, even outside Europe. And when it comes to the, the PhD part, um, then I guess um, uh, international questions are rather uh, rather important. So when it comes to technology and, to, and, and scientific exchange and so, this is all very international and also the conferences we, we attend are international conferences. Um, and I also, as a, as a PhD supervisor, I try to encourage my My people to uh, to go somewhere and, and to establish contacts for that and and to yeah, also to provide some funding for this because I think that's the most the best thing you can do is 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 leave for some time and come back and make make experiences outside Germany. You also left for some time um, and went to New Zealand. Um, when you went there and especially when you came back, um, what did you? learn at that time how did that influence you personally but also professionally yeah it influenced me a lot i guess um uh when when i say i i went to new zealand i have to say we went to new zealand because um, my wife and two of our children joined me and so this was a, a great adventure on the, on the family side um first of all to be honest Uh, second of all, it was very, very interesting to see another type of university life uh, when, when compared to German life. So um, I really enjoyed um, to be in, in New Zealand, to, to meet people, to see how they work and um, what they work on, and also to see the, the different kinds of, let's say, relationships between, between different groups at a university, so like students. PhD candidates, professors, and also administration. This was all very um, 
Uh, it was nice. It was just less hierarchic. It was it was nice to meet everyone each day at ten o'clock for for a cup of tea. So that's what they do in the department. Each each professor, each PhD candidate, they all meet in a tea room and have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, and then discuss things. This is not. I mean, it's fun, but it's not meant to be to be very uh, casual. Um, it is. It is about. It is about projects. It is, it is about funding. It is about politics at university, um, and you see these people uh, each day, at least for fifteen minutes, and that's what I really enjoyed because it it was great for networking. It was great to ask questions. It was great to get along with, um, and so not only on this personal family type level um, and. Uh, um, at a scientific level, it was also this like organizational level, which I found very interesting. And finally, I, I got a lot of stuff done. This this was also nice because because it, I was away from home, and there were not those everyday little problems from Germany. And that's what what I really enjoyed was working on a topic um, with with the right guys and not having too much to do uh, in, in terms of other stuff. That's just yeah everyday stuff so that was really nice and then of course it was new zealand with great landscape great people nice food um fantastic nature and all the stuff you know about new zealand and no i did not visit any of those lord of the ring places nope no nope. <laughs> maybe you should you should go again who knows um, yeah 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 i, I mean I'm, i'm still in contact with all these people so this this wouldn't be a problem to, to, to go there again and and maybe if i'm if i'm running out of, of out of locations i would maybe visit one or two of those places <laughs> Well, we are very glad to have you back. But before very much. <laughs> before you came to the University of Stuttgart, uh, you worked also uh, in 2016 at Blanca Microsystems. There, as head of mechanical design, you learned about industrial development processes, organization, and business systems. How have these components been crucial for building a successful project work here at the University of Stuttgart. I must say that the time with Leica was was really great. It was it was so interesting. It was lots of fun. It was I don't know an infinite number of new experiences and 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 impressions I, I got there. Um, and most interestingly for my for my work now was actually um, the management system um, Leica has this. Um, I mean, not everything is is could be transferred to university, not not at all. But but many little aspects and and methods I, I actually introduced in in our institute's everyday work, and that's what I really appreciate. Um, what I learned there for managing a team, managing um, a department, an industrial department, and how to get along uh, with other people. Also, older people. This, this sounds a bit, a little bit awkward, I guess. But at university, um, you always have to deal with young people. So that nobody's older than thirty in almost nobody um, in this PhD candidate group, and students are even younger. And then, of course, there's there's those colleagues with the gray hair and and administration. But you don't deal too much with administration. So actually. You're always in a situation that, that you are the oldest and everyone else is younger. Uh, but at uh, uh, in industry, there's there's a much more Gaussian distribution of of age in, in people. It's even Gaussian. It's it's just very straightforward. Different ages and different experiences and different history of people. And so this was very interesting how to deal with this. And and I guess this is helping me every day. Um, in, 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 in for the administration of, of the IMT and, and in my team. I have two questions about next developments. First, in which direction do you see your field evolving in the near future? Okay, um, evolving in the near future. I guess what we are always dealing with in, in, in technology and in engineering Uh, and thus uh, also in um, in medical engineering is to make systems um, more automated, um, more intelligent, so that we can um, 
speed up processes, that we can make uh, procedures more safe, that we can um, yeah, have more efficient processes also in, in medical situations. It doesn't mean that we have, we're going to have autonomous robots in the next five years, but we're going to have autonomous robots for special purposes or for special um, procedures or parts of procedures in the near future, I would say in the next 10 years. Um, and this is what, uh, uh, what it is, is aiming at. So make it simpler, safer, and uh, more reliable for the patients. And of course, also for um, the medical staff. And my second question concerns society and uh, people or patients for that matter. How should society be prepared for the future of automated or autonomous medical processes? How should patients be prepared? Is a change of mindset necessary as a whole? Or do you think, given our times and the technological um, appliances that you spoke about uh, at the beginning of our conversation, that people are more and more ready to accept this new next step in uh, to support treatment, for instance, already? I think with every new technology or let's say major step in technology, there's going to be some resistance and and some people who, who yeah, let's say don't, don't like it to have something new. And of course, there will be those early adopters who, who are eager to have something new. And a large majority of people will, between, it will be in between these two ends of the scale and um, what I would like to have from from society is uh, that we are open for new ideas and we have some kind of trust in those new ideas and and um, are not going to argue against it I, I, I guess nobody will ever be forced to be treated by a robotic doctor or so but um, we can all imagine that it might be simpler And even better for the patient if we have some kind of telemedicine, so that you can yeah, that you can consult a doctor uh, through some kind of video conference system, for example. It's quite simple, but why don't we do it already? I mean, we, we are all using video conference systems, at least since the pandemic. Um, and of course, there could be also some some kind of robotic interaction in terms of um, uh, uh, providing food in 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 a, in a hospital or or carrying people from A to B or, or transporting things from A to B. And so these are all steps towards this direction. And we will still see doctors being responsible and in charge of the actual situation. But we will be supported by robotic things, for example. Um, and what I would like to have from, from, from us as a society is that we are open to these new technologies and um, uh, Yeah, try to get along with it because um, it's with like as, as I said, with every new thing, new step, new technology, there's always this resistance, and let's just get rid of this resistance and be happy that there is um, uh, new things. Yeah, in general, I, I try to keep it as, as general as possible because I don't want to go in details which what could be new or whatever. But yeah, let's let's try and and see the progress and use this progress for us. Well, now we go into details, since we have arrived at our famous moment seven questions. We have collected seven questions that we would like to ask you. Please answer them as short as possible. Moment one. Spätzle or Maultaschen? Maultaschen. Moment two. One thing that you could change about the world would be? A renewable energy. Moment three. Do you have a media recommendation for us? Uh, what really impressed me was uh, A Little History of Nearly Everything by, by Bill Bryson. It's really a nice book. Moment four. The best advice that you have ever received was? 
Uh, the best advice I ever got was actually from New Zealand. Don't touch the worry until the, the worry touches you. Moment five. Your favorite place on campus at the University of Stuttgart is which one? Oh, I like Campus Beach very much in summer. That's really a nice place. Moment six. If I could start all over again, I would do the following differently. Don't worry too much, I would say. <laughs> no, I'm pretty happy with it, how it went. And finally, moment seven. Please complete the sentence. Thanks to my studies, I know that... Almost every technical problem can be solved somehow. Professor Pott, thank you for our conversation and wishing you all the best for the future work and also for the work of your team. Thanks very much for this nice uh, talk, for this invitation. And um, let's hope um, for a good cake next time we meet. I'm in for it, absolutely. And to our podcast users, please stay tuned for our upcoming conversations that are always based on what is made in science. My name is Wolfgang Koldkamp. Have a great podcasting day. Goodbye and good talking.